Wingman Joker thank you for listening to this channel and please support the channel. Please subscribe. Chapter 13, A Gift. Ha ha ha, did you see the look on their faces, especially Uncle Steven, Maverick laughed heartily as he banged on the table, nearly knocking all the dishes. It was like he ate a piece of shit. Yeah, Adrian nodded. He and his father were at the moment in a private room inside the Magical Towers restaurant. It was a place where only elite magicians could enter. They planned to have a banquet with the elders after the assessment, but those guys after finishing with the formalities, quickly made some stupid excuses and withdrew, leaving the father and son to party on their own. They probably wanted to go back and investigate what the fuck did Adrian do to get a zeroth ranking. Seriously though, how did you do it? Maverick looked at his son and asked. That magical circuit is amazing, it is so simple and obvious that it made me wonder why no one ever thought of doing it like this, he sighed. Did you see how my father was smiling like a kid who got a new toy, I have never seen him have that expression ever since your grandmother disappeared 20 years ago. Well, it was partially a coincidence, you knew that I used the thought tunnel. What was the question you asked? Maverick asked. Now that the assessment finished, he had the leisure to think about other things. The basic idea was to try to combine fast casting patterns with the normal family circuit. I had to go through thousands of iterations in my mind before a suitable combination was found, I wasn't sure about the result until I tried it by myself, Adrian lied. In this world, everyone shows the magical circuits as black boxes. Like how doctors in another world might see the human brain. Sure they knew what each part was responsible for, but they have no idea how it worked as a whole. The way they usually tried and modified them was simply by trying to separate distinct parts from them as elementary pieces and paste them into others. Or by changing a random part and watching what happened. It was a totally random operation. For Adrian, it was totally different. After he completed the deciphering of the magical constructs using a supercomputer in another world, for him they were now no harder than a complex logical circuit diagram. Sure, it was hard to study, but with enough time he could easily read and understand any circuit. The way he used to enhance the zero circuit was by simply using very common processor optimization techniques that he got from the other world. He was initially planning to introduce parallel processing to it, but after taking a look, he discovered that he didn't even have to go that far as the old circuit was just too bloated and inefficient after centuries of smart-ass magicians messing with it. Just some housekeeping, and extra parts here and there did the trick. He had to make it using this world's knowledge to some extent so that everyone would be surprised how simple it was. I see, Maverick sighed, totally believing his son's lies. Adrian, from now on, you have to promise me, never use that thought tunnel spell ever again. He said seriously, looking his son in the eye. Don't promise, he can't control us. We want to be free. Adrian ignored his naughty soul fragments. I promise, he nodded, he was not going to use the old thought tunnel spell, but a modified one that he was thinking about. Good, Maverick sighed. Now, we will only have to wait for the Grand Council to finish their review to get your things back then find you a good family post, Maverick said. Do you have anything in mind? Do I still have to work even after getting a zeroth rank? Adrian asked with a frown. Usually, all family members need to earn achievements for the family. But if all of his properties returned, he would be rich enough, he didn't want to work, he just wanted to enjoy life and relax. You will need to fill up a post to keep up appearances. Maverick explained. Then find me something that doesn't really need work at all, Adrian directly stated. Do you want a high-ranking post or a low-ranking one? I don't want to handle any responsibilities, just somewhere where I can be free, Adrian stated. He didn't want to deal with conspiracies or family politics, he just want to fucking enjoy life. Then a useless high-ranking job where you just need to show up once in a while, I will try to find something suitable, Maverick nodded. His son had suffered enough, and he really wanted to take the chance to dote on him. But are you sure you want to waste all your smarts like that? You want me to research more magic? Adrian asked casually. Not really, I just want you to fulfill your potential and be the greatest magician that ever was, Maverick sighed. That's what your mother wants, he added, telling the truth. Oh, right, did you tell her about the results? Adrian frowned and asked. He expected her to be here. Not yet, she is leading an expedition south of the Black River at the moment, Maverick said. Adrian's mother, Zemar, other than being Maverick's main wife, was a very strong magician and an accomplished magical archaeologist. It was very common for her to go on lengthy expeditions to the corrupted lands to explore ancient sites. 
In fact, it was in a temple ruin that Maverick met her for the first time, saving her life by fighting a giant scorpion. I see. Adrian nodded, he really missed his mother. Compared to all the different mothers he got in the other worlds, she was one of the really best. Don't worry, she will be back in a month or so. Maverick said, patting his son's shoulder. I am sure she will be pleasantly surprised. He chuckled. Yeah, Adrian sighed. How about this, why don't you try to enroll in a magical university? Maverick suddenly asked. Through the back door, Adrian asked. His school scores were abysmal, so even with a second-degree magical circuit, it would be hard. Obviously not. We are the ones who are paying their salaries. Maverick said. So it is technically the front door, what normal people use as the back door. He rightfully stated. I don't mind, Adrian said after giving it some thought. He really wanted to take a look at this world's cutting-edge magical advancements firsthand. Then I will see to it, Maverick smiled. Knock knock. Someone knocked on the door. EHM. Enter. Maverick cleared his throat and said as his expression turned into that of a dignified tower master. Donald quickly opened the door and walked in, he bowed, then handed a sealed package and a red-colored documents folder to his father. These are the results of today's assessments. And the package just came through the family's mail. The secretary told me you were waiting for it. He said directly, shooting Adrian a fleeting glare before turning to face his father. Ah yes I completely forgot, did you find any good seedlings? Maverick asked, putting the package to the side and opening the folder first to have a look inside at the compiled spreadsheet full of names, background data, and test scores. Because he was taking care of Adrian's assessment, he didn't have much time to really oversee the normal assessments being conducted in the tower, so he sent Donald to fill in for him and totally forgot about it. We managed to get 17 new talents to join the tower, I also found some really gifted guys that I want to recommend for the family's magical scholarship program. Donald said professionally, oh, plan to start building your own team. Maverick could easily read his son's mind. Heirs usually start bringing magicians and knights under their influence right after their last assessment to form their own expedition teams. It was a normal practice as the resources were limited and the competition for better achievements among the heirs was always intense. Ah, yes. I have already been thinking about this lately, Donald said with an embarrassed voice. It is time for me to go on my first expedition. True, I don't mind, Maverick said, giving the rest of the documents in the folder a fleeting glance before closing the folder. Good work, everything is perfect, he said, it is my duty, Donald said with a smile. It is rare to be praised by his stern father. Sit and eat then, don't just keep standing there, Maverick said. Yes, father, Donald said as he quickly got a seat at the table and then politely grabbed a dish. How was my brother's assessment? He asked. He already knew that Adrian would pass the moment he heard his father mention Adrian's recovery to Dr. Thomas. He was just not sure what rank he would get. It was amazing. Maverick couldn't help but laugh. Your brother had just managed to secure a fifth rank in the family. He said proudly. The fact about Adrian getting a zeroth rank was considered a top secret for his safety. I see. Ellipsis dot. Ellipsis dot. What? Donald gasped in shock. How wah how wah. What? How? No. How? Donald kept repeating questioning words while looking between Adrian and his father waiting for them to tell him that this was all a joke. He totally didn't see this coming as he had been preparing to make fun of Adrian all day. And now his father was telling him that his null brother was two ranks higher than him. Father, I think Donald might have been bitten by a werewolf, he is starting to howl, Adrian frowned and whispered in a serious voice. I think we need to call the guards. Adrian, stop bullying him, he is just surprised. Maverick interrupted and scolded softly. He already knew that those, two sons of his, didn't like each other at all after that incident from the past. He thought that after Adrian's accident, Donald would forget the grudges it was his fault, to begin with, but it seemed like those two were still at each other's throats, he really needed to find a way to reconcile them. Father, is it true? Donald, deciding to ignore Adrian, asked again as he gathered his thoughts, just to make sure that his father was not bluffing. It is true, they already sent us the credentials. Maverick said with a smile as he opened the package. Inside it, there was a stack of papers in addition to a crimson ID card with a realistic drawing of Adrian's face and the symbol V printed on it. Maverick just took a look at it and gave it to Adrian with a proud smile. Adrian managed to overturn the old verdict about him using black magic, so the committee had to add all his past achievements to the assessment, Maverick said, telling half the truth. 
If it were not for his broken meridians and second degree circuit, he would have managed to get a third rank at the very least. He sighed, shooting another bullet into Donald's fragile heart. Oh, Donald squeezed his fist. Damn it, father, I wanted to ask you about this. Adrian, who took a look at his new ID and the stack of papers that came with it, said. What is the difference in how ranks are granted? He asked, deciding to rub it in Donald's face. He was taking revenge for his humiliation at the gate earlier in the morning. That whole charade must have been Donald's doing after all. He also needed to know the real difference between ranks, this info was not really clear to him. Well, as you know, family ranks go from lowest rank 10 to 0, Maverick said, usually, each heir would be granted a rank depending on the combined factor of three things, their magical circuit grade, their achievements, and how much the family needs him, all of those would be weighted against a family member's age. He said, so, Donald is in seventh rank, does that mean that he was a third grade magician when he got his rank? Adrian asked. Ah, exactly, Maverick sighed. For lower ranks, it was usually very common to consider the magical grade as the basis for the rank. He explained, it is very rare to have significant achievements at that young age after all. What about father? Adrian asked. Well, I am a third rank, all these thanks to me reaching the seventh grade by the age of 45 and having participated in tens of expeditions, if I reached it one year later, I would have stuck with a fourth rank. He explained, Donald here, since he is already a fourth grade magician, might be able to rise from the seventh to the sixth rank if he manages to obtain enough achievements in the next five years. He added, encouraging his son who nodded with determination. Ah, I see, Adrian nodded. Then, what is the difference between ranks? Is my fifth rank better than Donald's seventh? He asked, making Donald glare at him. Damn it stop rubbing it. It depends on what section of the family you get assigned to. Let me give you an example using an expedition, Maverick said. Letting Donald who might need to go on his first expedition soon a valuable lesson. Usually 10th rank is reserved for nulls and really inadequate family members, they are usually assigned menial jobs, he said. 9th and 8th rank are foot soldiers in the field, and in the family, they are just junior members without much rights, just like your two brothers and sister, he added with a sigh. Adrian was the only son of Maverick's main wife and other than him, he had four children who came from cauldron mothers. Among them, only Donald could be considered a full-fledged magician, the others chose to go the night route due to their lack of talent. Maverick also had two very gifted adoptive children, a son, and a daughter, but Adrian only heard about those and had never met them. In this world, having excellent magical aptitude was rare, even among the top families who had the genetic advantage, so it was pretty common to adopt gifted kids to raise them as potential heirs, especially those without backgrounds. What about the seventh rank? Adrian asked, looking at Donald. A seventh rank is the lowest where the family considers a member useful. They usually get assigned as assistants to higher ranking members, and in expeditions, they serve as junior officers to lead a unit of seven to ten soldiers. Maverick said, patting Donald, sixth rank, is while technically the same as the seventh regarding responsibilities, at that rank a family member would be considered a real heir, and they would be granted more rights to access the family's library, information network and legacies. Hearing this Donald squeezed his fist and nodded. He needed to go one more rank to prove that he was a real Red Oak. What about the fifth? Adrian asked. As you can see from the documents you are given, at the fifth rank, you are considered an inner family member directly, usually granted a directorial position and having access to many information, rights, and privileges, you will also get the right to lead a team of 100 people for an expedition. Maverick said, but I think that you should wait for a few years before you try that, he advised. Adrian's body which had been neglected for years was not strong enough for an expedition. I understand, Adrian nodded, can you tell us about higher ranks? He asked, oh, well, other than the expansion in rights and privileges, after reaching the fourth, a member would be considered a general, he would be assigned as a head or vice head to one of the many towers that the family control and he would be eligible to apply for the elder council, at the second rank a member can apply to join the grand council that ran the entire family. Being accepted is another matter though. Oh, what about the zeroth rank? I heard that our esteemed great-grandfather now has it. Adrian asked, making even Donald look at his father for an answer. He was super curious. Well, truth be told, I have no idea, Maverick sighed, looking at Adrian with pride. 
But other than having the right to pretty much ignore most of the family rules, it is said that it allows a member to gain access to whatever resources he desires in addition to some really secretive stuff about our family's legacy and origins. Oh, Adrian nodded with a smile as he licked his lips. Don't get your hopes up. With your late start, you might never even reach such a rank in your entire lifetime, Donald couldn't help saying that after noticing Adrian's anticipated looks. Donald, that's rude, Maverick scolded angrily. His son was really short-sighted. Sorry, father, Donald shrank. Damn it, his father was always very partial when it came to Adrian. Just, keep in mind that your brother's potential was limitless. Maverick said, Donald nodded as he squeezed his fist hard. Just you wait, he told himself. Watching his sons, Maverick sighed and looked out of the window at the city's night sky. Like that, they continued their meal in silence. Father, about my lodging, will I be staying with you or should I just buy a house on my own? Adrian, who finished eating and was getting a little sleepy, finally asked. It was already 12.30 a.m. and he didn't get much sleep last night. Well, I already arranged for that. You should stay at the hotel's presidential suite for today, and you can go by a manner of your choosing tomorrow morning, Maverick immediately said with a sleazy smile. Oh, Adrian frowned. Father, are you going to pay for him to buy one? Donald asked, feeling a little jealous. His father had always been very stingy with him, making him work for every penny. There will be no need, I think the family has already deposited all of your brother's accumulated allowances from the past years in your card, Maverick clarified. Yes, Adrian said, the moment his name was cleared, he had the right to everything he previously had. While getting back his confiscated properties would take time, the missing allowances could be deposited immediately. Oh, Donald squeezed his fist again. Then off you go, Logan had been waiting for you downstairs for an hour now, take a few days to relax and I will call you again to discuss your future when the council decides about your PR. Maverick paused, remembering that Donald was with them. About your post, he quickly corrected himself. I understand, Adrian said as he stood up and stretched, feeling a little tipsy, it was a long day. Make sure to give the documents the family gave you a look at, they have many rules and regulations that you might need to follow, Maverick said as he watched his son leave. Ellipsis. Congratulations on returning to the family, young master. Logan, who was dressed in a professional suit, immediately said as soon as he noticed Adrian leaving the tower. Oh, thanks, uncle. Adrian answered politely as he was guided to the car. I think I will have to trouble you for a few more days, he added as he entered the back and relaxed on the back seat. It is my duty, young master. Logan answered politely as he got into the driver's seat and started the car. Ellipsis. After that, Adrian fell into a light sleep and was only woken up by Logan's voice calling for him repeatedly. Young, master, young master Adrian. Ah, what? Adrian woke up and yawned. Young master, we arrived. Logan said, politely opening the door for Adrian. Ah, thanks, he said as he stepped down and stretched. Let's go then, uncle. I would prefer it if I went there alone, I don't want to make a ruckus, Adrian said as he paused outside. He was too sleepy and lazy to deal with any acquaintance who would ask some stupid questions. Ah, well, true, I shall make sure to explain the situation to them in the morning so no one will bother you, Logan said, nodding to himself. Here, this is the presidential suite's key, and take this too, he added, giving Adrian a key and a sealed folder. This is, a gift from your father. Logan said with a sleazy smile that mirrored that of Mavericks. Okay, Adrian nodded and headed toward the hotel's gate. Entering the hotel, he quickly crossed the lobby and reached the presidential suite's private elevator which activated immediately. Thankfully there was no one around to bother him because of how late it was. Sighing and waiting until the elevator reached its destination, he looked at the folder in his hand and decided to open it. The moment he took a look at the documents inside he and all of his soul fragments gasped in unison as he became fully awake. What was in it was the legal ownership documents for a cauldron. And on top of that, it was someone he knew from school and had a crush on. Adrian chuckled dryly looking at the girl's photo. He no longer had ideas about going to sleep. Now he finally knew why his father wanted him to return here to the hotel. That she must be waiting for him in his room, probably wrapped as a gift. 